1960s in Britain was a time of turbulence in technology, finance and fashion. In architecture, it was a decade of demolition and concrete cubes. Up went the sort of buildings that nostalgists blame for ruining their towns. Modernism, that had arisen in the work of Philip Johnson in the early 1930s, had come of age. It was form following function with minimal ornamentation. In Europe, Walter Gropius and Le Corbusier were the pioneers of the movement, with the latter having a profound impact on the design of many public housing schemes in Britain. Le Corbusier's mantra of a building being a machine for living set the tone. Modern materials became available, reinforced concrete, steel frames, curtain walls and ribbon windows were strong features. Berthold Lubetkin from Tbilisi, Georgia, practiced in Paris in the 1920s, but moved to London in 1931. He is best known for Finsbury Health Centre, High Point Housing Complex and the London Zoo Penguin Pool. Gordon Ryder and Peter Yates, both influenced by Le Corbusier and Lubetkin, came together in the 1950s to form an architectural firm in the Northeast. Their multidisciplinary practice, including engineers, underpinned their success from an early stage. This ethos was mirrored in their own office building in Killingworth. The firm's early work included shop fronts and exhibitions. Builder James Liddell commissioned four 11-storey blocks of flats at Whitley Bay. Beacon House, completed in 1959, was the first of the four. It contains 44 flats in this seaside location. It was the first multi-storey block of flats in the northeast. The other three blocks were never built. The Ryder and Yates signature horizontal window strips with casements extending to the corners of the building are in evidence. Otherwise, blank wall areas are treated to a modern Greek key tile decoration, visible for miles around. There are elegant balconies. The whole design is refined. Two bedroom flats here exchange hands for over 200,000 pounds in 2022. The firm's big break came in 1962, when Newcastle Council planned a new housing estate adjacent to Kenton Bar. Ryder and Yates needed to try out some ideas that they had developed from their work in Peter Lee, and designed a small-scale housing scheme next to the West Road Crematorium. St Cuthbert's Green is a complex of 22 dwellings featuring four of the eight housing types chosen for Kenton Bar. As built, these homes had flat roofs, but maintenance troubles led to the council replacing them with the more traditional but incongruent pitch design. St Cuthbert's Green received the plaudits and awards, whereas Kenton Bar was more representative of the firm's design philosophy. The Kenton Bar development lies on a north sloping site with views to the Cheviot Hills. The vehicles are routed around the edges with pedestrian access within. The dwellings are a mixture of houses and flats with communal greenery to the fronts and private rear gardens. Every dwelling had an associated garage, but in later years, some of these have been demolished. The central community focus was the shops and leisure area where the famous pyramid stood with an associated water feature. Following the council's failure to maintain these features, it removed them in the early 1990s and replaced the plaza with a grass area. The pro 
problem of natural light in dwellings on a north-facing slope was solved by these roof lights, flooding the stairwell with sunshine. Due to cost implications, this feature was omitted on all but the southernmost range. The rectangular and cube shapes reflect Le Corbusier. The response to the topography is in the manner of Lubetkin. The design of the estate shows what good municipal housing can be. The separation of people and traffic, open spaces and simple, elegant, sturdy shapes work as well today as they did in the 1960s. 70% of the dwellings are now in private ownership. Meanwhile, on Scotswood Road, on the southwest edge of the city, the firm designed this Ford garage and dealership in 1964. The Riverwood slope means that workshops could be accommodated below the showroom in a two-storey design. The frontage is supported on three columns, allowing free space inside. The rectangular flue and facility space in the forecourt sported the Ford logo on all four sides. The car showroom had an uninterrupted glass curtain wall. The dealership is now closed, with windows boarded and an uncertain future. The next major commission was for the Gas Council, formed to oversee infrastructure spending to secure nationwide gas supplies. Here in Killingworth, Norgas House was the headquarters of the proposed massive distribution network from the extraction effort in the North Sea. Built in 1965 but now demolished, its sweeping lines and low profile set the template for much further work. The nearby Gas Engineering Research Centre, completed in 1967, was where the National Pipeline was designed. Its distinctive sloped arch entrance, a device shared with Stirling Organics in nearby Dudley, and inverted cone storage tanks on the roof make this a memorable building. British Gas vacated the site in 1995, after which North Tyneside Council took residence. Built around the same time, Killingworth Township Citadel was the central shopping and commercial centre. It was connected to the residential towers by elevated walkways. The place resembled a prison rather than a castle, and it was demolished in 1987. This 1974 build for Newcastle Council became the Salvation Army Social Services Centre on City Road, to the east of the centre. Here, the irregular façade disguises the institutional function of the building. The curved entrance canopy, the most striking detail, reflects Lubetkin's High Point 2. The superintendent's penthouse flat is covered by an arched parabolic roof, another nod to Lubetkin. This Grade 2 listed building was vacated in 2014 and has remained empty since then. It is on the City Council's for sale list. Perhaps the most imposing extant Ryder and Yates structure in Newcastle is their 1974 Mia House in Ellison Place. The name derives from the initials of the founders of the charity owner, Mungo Campbell, Esther McCracken and Alistair Fife. There are almost 2,500 square metres of office space, a suite of fifth floor meeting rooms offering panoramic views, and a ground floor auditorium. The cafe, situated next to the entrance, is a convenient meeting place in the bustling city centre. 
1981 saw the local commercial TV channel Tyne Tees Television expand its premises to cater for the newly created Channel 4. Ryder and Yates designed this new build extension, Studio 5, with its iconic entrance canopy, nicknamed The Tube, which gave its name to a weekly popular music and culture show. Following several acquisitions, mergers, and the creation of the nationwide ITV studios, this facility became surplus. The news and continuity moved to a Gateshead site in 2005, with this building being demolished in 2010. The Armstrong Whitworth Armament Works had existed on the banks of the River Tyne, west of the city, since 1859, but was much expanded by the needs of the First World War. In 1927, it merged with the Vickers Engineering Company and expanded along the riverbank, employing over 60,000. In 1982, Ryder and Yates designed this new tank manufacturing shed, it required unencumbered internal space for flexible use. Wide access points and roof glazing were also significant features. The Defence System factory closed in 2013. Today the factory houses Reese, a group of engineering companies offering road repairs, sheet metal fabrication, landmine clearance machinery and armoured vehicle protection systems. Ryder and Yates's legacy lives on in Ryder architecture with offices worldwide. Bank House, a Ryder project, is rising high, set to complete in 2023. Good architecture cannot be a slavish imitation of the past, but must be a statement for the future. Machines for living, working, enjoyment. It is places carved out of empty space for people. Dubetkin said that one can't untangle the rational and the poetic within the aspirations of modern architecture. To pursue mere technology or create self-indulgent bombast is to unleash a useless visual slurry of untrammeled development. Watch some more from Radio Jonathan. Subscribe to the channel. Enjoy.